Oftentimes in people's first couple of builds with SaberSim, there's a common question that comes up. I'm only playing 20 or 150 or one lineup. Why are you building me 607 in this case? SaberSim's lineup pool is one of the most powerful parts of the SaberSim process, and it's really important to understand why we're building these extra lineups and how they're useful to you to have success using SaberSim with your DFS lineups. My name is Jordan, I'm the head coach here at SaberSim, and in this video, I'm gonna be diving into SaberSim's lineup pool, talking about some of the strengths and power that is behind it, and we've got a lot to get into here in this video, so let's go ahead and just dive right in. Now, right off the bat, one of the biggest advantages to SaberSim's lineup pool is it allows you to make changes quickly to the lineups that you're actually going to play in your contests without having to go back and rebuild lineups every single time. If you want to take a big stand, for example, let's say we want to fade Seattle stacks on tonight's slate, we can go ahead and set our exposure to Seattle stacks here to zero, click apply, and we'll re immediately remove all of the Seattle stacks from your lineups, selecting a new set of 20 from the pool here where there are no Seattle stacks. Instead of having to go make a couple changes, run another build, make a few changes, run another build over and over again, which can just be really time consuming and tedious, you can make these changes here, take stands, lock players, remove players, increase or decrease exposure, all at once here, all in one spot quickly and efficiently. But even better than this process being made faster or more efficient here is the ability to get immediate feedback about what your actions and how you're handling your lineups affects the rest of your lineup portfolio. Let's go ahead and do that again here. We're going to fade Seattle, but this time I want to pay attention to how my lineups are changing as I X out the Seattle stacks from my pool here. So you can see Seattle's my most popular stack here right off the bat, but I'm getting a lot of Cubs, Dodgers, Giants, uh, and so on here. And let's go ahead and also take a look at our pitchers here. So a lot of Patrick Sandoval and then a handful of these other guys here. This is FanDuel, so just one pitcher. If we go back here again and remove Seattle once again from our pool and apply, we can get an immediate sense of what is the impact of making that change. What lineups are likely to be the best now? Sometimes a popular stack like the Cubs might be showing up in a lot of your exposures because based on positions or salary, they fit in well into Seattle stacks. But when we remove Seattle stacks, it actually ends up being that St. Louis and uh, the Mets are, are now our most popular stacks here. If we look at our pitchers here, uh, not much has changed in this case. Still a lot of Patrick Sandoval and Steven Matz and a couple of these other guys here popping up. Not only can you make these changes really quickly to get the lineups that you want, but you get a very fast feedback loop from SaberSim saying, if you're not going to do this, this is the next best option here with the other exposures or other stacks you're going to get. It works the other way as well. If we wanted to say, for example, uh, let's try to lock in Patrick Sandoval as our pitcher. And let's say we want to take a stand in that direction here. Well, we can go ahead here and see what are the best possible stacks we can play where we're locking in Patrick Sandoval and removing all Mariner stacks from our pool. Well, now it's the Giants who are probably fitting in there uh, because they, again, happen to fit in very nicely positionally or salary-wise. So not only are you getting uh, to make these changes quicker and more efficiently all in one screen here, but you're also getting a faster uh, response from SaberSim or feedback from SaberSim on what types of lineups now pop up after you're making those changes. But what if you're not really making a lot of changes here post-build, or you're not really concerned about this process being faster? Maybe you have a process that works for you already that you don't need to use adjustments in the post-build screen to get the most out of SaberSim here. Is the lineup pool still useful to you? The answer to that is a very clear yes. And to understand why, you need to have a sense of what SaberSim is doing when it actually comes to building these lineups and how it's different from traditional optimizers. I'm not going to go super in-depth into this here here in this video. I'll link a video in the description of this one if you want more information on how SaberSim sims and lineup construction actually works. But for this video, I'll give you the spark notes. Now, all other traditional optimizers are going to take the rules that you have put into the optimizer, the projections that you're using, and then just optimize the top projected lineups following the rules and restrictions that you've put in place. And the problem with this, like I've said in countless of our other videos on our YouTube channel here, is that averages and average projections don't give you what it actually takes to win your DFS contests. You need lineups with upside by taking into account the real game scripts that could play out on the field and building the best or most profitable lineups for those game scripts. 
This is exactly how Saberson builds lineups. We are simulating games play by play thousands of times, then pulling those game simulations into our lineup optimizer, building the best possible lineup for different game scripts when those game scripts actually play out on the field. Why is this important to the lineup pool specifically? Well, at the end of the build, we rank lineups by Sabre score here, which is a calculation that's taking into account the scoring upside, the correlations, and the ownership of a lineup to determine what is the most profitable lineup from your pool into the contest that you're going to enter it into here. Having the lineups built from game scripts themselves is great, but what we really want to do is figure out what lineups built from these game sims and from these game scripts are going to be the most profitable when played into the contest that you're entering, and that's what Saber Score does. But where a traditional optimizer is going to give you the same number one lineup every single time you press build, unless you're using randomness or something like that, Saber Sim will not. The first lineup built by Sabersim, so if you were to just go in and say, build me one lineup with one pool, is not necessarily going to be the best possible lineup you could have built or the best possible lineup that Sabersim could have built for the contest you're gonna enter it into. And this follows for additional lineups as well. The top 20 lineups that you build with Sabersim are not necessarily going to be the best 20 or the most profitable 20. They are just a set of 20 optimal lineups for a set of different ways that the games could play out on the slate. Now, these two factors combined here, the fact that Saberson is building lineups using game scripts and optimizing for the best lineup for a given game script and not average projections, along with the fact that Saberson is then ranking those lineups by which ones are the most profitable lineups in your contest with Saber Score, means that the more and more lineups you build in a single build, the more game scripts you are taking into account and the more accurately Saberson will rank and score them with Saber Score. Ultimately, this means for everyone, whether you are making a ton of adjustments in a build or making no adjustments at all, it is always best to use the lineup pool and generally to make it as large as you can that is available on your particular Saberson plan. Now, if I lost you a little bit there, there's a mathematical way of thinking about this that can help make it a little more clear here. If you're playing 20 lineups and you just build a pool of 20 lineups, your top 20 there is 100% of your pool. Every lineup in your set is gonna be entered into your contest. If you're playing 20 lineups and you build 100 lineups, your top 20 is 20% 20 of your pool. Ranked and scored by Saber Score, Saber Sim is saying that these lineups are in the top 20% of all of these lineups that we've built for you here. If you have 500 lineups in your pool and you're looking for the top 20, that is the top 4% of your pool. And as you have more and more lineups that you are comparing the lineups you're actually playing, you're going to enter into your contest against, the more accurately we can say that those are the top lineups and the more certain we can be that those are the best possible lineups you can be playing. Now, to sum up, SaberSim's lineup pool is a powerful part of your lineup building process on SaberSim. But on a practical level, you really don't need to sweat anything here. We're automatically going to set the pool size equal to 500 here when you open your build up for the first time. And all you really want to do is make sure you're using the pool and making it as large as possible that's allowed on your SaberSim plan. If you're making changes in the build screen, having the pool will let you make these changes faster and get quicker feedback on what these changes are doing to the rest of your lineups in your portfolio. But whether you're making changes here in the build or not, having the pool period increases the quality of the lineups you ultimately enter into your contest. If you have any other questions about the Sabersim lineup pool or the rest of the lineup building process with our tools, you can always reach out in our Discord server or by emailing support at sabersim.com. And in the meantime, thank you for watching and good luck.